Welcome everyone to the Integrity 365 webinar. So thank you uh, very much for, for joining us on uh, another, another episode of our webinar series. In this series, as I'm sure you're aware, we're going to be talking about trust registration and, and what that means and, and what you need to know. We're, we're kindly here with uh, Ben Mason as well, who's an absolute expert in the field and he's going to talk, talk us all through it and make it sound very very simple i'm sure i'll um, do I'll, I'll do i'll do my best and and that's all we can ever ask of you ben um so what we're, we're trying to achieve here in the in the webinar series um for our clients is to, to add value to the service that, that, that we provide you. Obviously, with, a, with your financial planning, I'm sure there'll be very uh, many, shall I say, complex issues that, that we need to uh, address. And certainly for, for individuals joining today, um, this will be a very important subject if you hold or if you're a beneficiary of, of a trust. So please do provide us with feedback, how you, you find the, the, the webinar, we're, we're keen to roll these out on a continuous basis for our clients to, to add that value. We've completed previous webinars on sustainable investing, how to prepare for, for later life, inheritance tax planning and business relief, maximizing income from your various tax allowances in retirement, all fantastic topics which we can go back and, and look at if you wish. Likewise, Tonight, this will be available again to, to watch back in case there is a, a few bits that you want to listen to again, just to make it clear in your head. Um, the future webinars we've got coming up, we've got a great one in June with Nick Booker um, talking about your annual allowances and why, why wait till the end of the tax year to use those annual allowances. And that's with... Uh, Nick Booker and Neil Groves from uh, Beavis Morgan, who's the head of taxation there. So please do join us because that will be a, a fantastic session. Before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping to let you know we are recording this session, but don't worry, only mine and Ben's cameras are, are on, so we won't be able to, to see any of you. Likewise, no microphones are on other than mine and Ben. So don't worry about putting your, your phone on silent. Ben, if your, yours isn't already on silent, please click the button. Um, after the presentation, we'll be emailing out feedback forms. So as I say, please do give us your feedback. So today we're, we're going to be covering off um, the upcoming legislation change when it comes to trusts and registering trusts with HMRC. So we'll be looking a little bit into the, the reason why this legislation has been introduced, what you need to know as a trustee or a beneficiary, what action you may or may not have to take and when you need to, to do this by. So to help us get through the subjects, Ben's here from Kinherit, the CEO and founder of Kinherit, which specializes in will writing, estate planning, trust planning. He's a qualified uh, estate planner, uh, step affiliate, and one of our preferred partners that, that we recommend our clients to. And having experienced the services of, of Kinheria, I can only endorse them as much as possible. They were fantastic with me and uh, doing some planning around for my parents. So before I head over, uh, hand over to Ben, just to let you know, we will be doing a, a Q&A session at the end. Um, please feel free to, to fire in any questions that you may have. Um, you can do that in, in the chat box or there's a QA and a icon at the bottom. So over to you, Ben. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're well. Look, fasten your seatbelts. This is going to be an absolute belter. We're going to be talking about trust registration. There is very few things in life that are more exciting. Now the comedy is out of the way. I'm going to obviously talk to you today about trust registration and what it is, but just sort of 60 seconds on who we are. Um, I'm the CEO of Kinherit Wills, Trust Powers of Attorney. We do trust registration as well. And as I've kindly said, we, we, we've been working with Integrity for, 
for a while now and looked after maybe some of you on this session today. And uh, hopefully we're always here to answer any questions and work with you should you need that. So you can hear it. As I say, we've been going now nearly five years um, between the directors and myself and our estate planners. We've got far too long in the industry, in the sector. But if you have any questions at all, please do speak to Integrity um, Financial Planner and they can come back to us and ask any questions. I'm more than happy to talk to you. Right, I'm going to share my screen if that's okay with you, Doug. And can you all see, can you see my screen, Doug? Give me a wave. Excellent, that's great news. So what we're going to talk about now is trust registration. We're going to go through it. It is going to, it's, a, it's obviously a dry subject. We're not, we're not talking about clever ways of saving tax or, or, or this, that and the other. We're, we're going to talk about a fairly dry piece of legislation that's come in and why it's been done, what it looks like and how it affects you. So we're going to look at what is trust registration and which trusts. Um, what does it look like? What's the process? Um, any fines that, are, that are, could be applied and any changes that are being made? And then we'll talk a little bit about our solution from Kinhera, which is True Reg, at the very end. So what is trust registration? Well, before I come on what, what it is, I'll just let you know the first time it was floated was in, in June 2017 as part of the Anti-Money Laundering Directive 4. There have been a series of anti-money laundering directives as part of um, part of the financial services and how that works. That's worked with the previously part of the EU. And then it was finally actually put in place in March 2020 as part of MLD5. Now, you all might remember March 2020, not for the AMLD5, but for the fact that obviously that was the month in which our country had its first lockdown and COVID really became a thing in all of our lives. So there was then some delay to how this got implemented and, and the deadlines and deadlines got moved backwards and fines changed. But before I come on to that, I think it's important to understand why this has been done. Well, I'll just read, I'll just read a line on HMRC's website for you. It's so much easier. The Trust Registration Service is a new online service. It's a single route for trustees and their personal representatives to comply with the registering of funds, uh, registration of, sorry, registration obligations of trusts and funds to ensure they comply with money laundering transfer of funds rules and to comply with terrorist financing what what they've said what they've seen in 2017 which is the first time it proposed <clears throat> was that there was some terrorist financing taking place through through trusts due to the way in which people id now the ability to access bank accounts that's one of the things they said but undoubtedly it's also to do with some taxation issues which is there have been many people who have discussed this and got many anecdotal stories of people that, that didn't pay the right tax as they should have done. So for me, while they say it's about anti-money laundering, and it certainly is, there's also an element of they want to make sure that if you've got a trust that it's in place in the correct way, the correct tax is being paid, while also ensuring those who are party to a trust, be it the settler, the beneficiary, trustees, are all complying with the anti-money laundering rules. Because of COVID, we've had two series of updates, October 2020 and October 2021. October 2020, they basically said, hey, they being HMRC, who are referred to the, from most of the time as they, uh, they said that what we need to understand is this is the process. This is going to fulfill, fulfill each part of the process. And they gave a deadline. Well, it was obvious a little bit after October 2020, that the deadline was just not going to be met. People were still struggling with the effects of COVID. IFAs were unable to see their clients in the same way they were before. And there were lots of complications and lots of things happening. So what they did was they said in October 2021, okay, here's your final deadline of September 2022. They laid out all of the rules and all of the, the other parts of it, which I'll go through in a moment. And they also said that if you've got a new trust from January 2022, that needs to be registered within 90 days. That's now since disappeared from some parts of their website. But it was something they did say very clearly that from January 2022, all new trusts had 90 days to register. It is on a couple of parts of their website, but it is no longer in their, uh, their trust registration manual. And we have to really take the trust registration manual as their Bible because that is the thing they update and they say people to refer to. But I think it's important to put that in there because that was a really big, important thing. And, and Doug was nodding as I said it, the trust from January 22 had to be registered, all new trusts. However, 
the September 20 deadline, 2022 deadline will apply to old trusts and new trusts, depending on the type of trust it might be. And something that's really important and that's been missed is that if there are any changes or a trust becomes taxable, these changes need to be confirmed, or if a trust becomes taxable, it needs to be confirmed and re-registered annually. So if you have any changes in a year, let's say Doug is my trustee and we add another one, then Doug, Doug or I, whoever's leading that trust, must now re must register that change. And that's really important. And something that has been a little bit overlooked when we talk to, talk to clients about what's going on. <clears throat> Which trusts? Well, since October, 6th October 2022, uh, trustees are legally required to keep a detailed record of the trust, key people named within, and most trusts will also be need to be registered in HMRC's trust register by 1st September. Following on from what I've discussed, obviously that's the 6th October date. Now, we're not going to be able to give an exhaustive list of trusts that need to be registered today, and we could be here for a long, long time. It's much easier to say the vast majority of trusts that are live do need to be registered. If you have any queries about that, please speak to your wealth planner or, or financial advisor from Integrity. But the vast majority do need to be do need to be registered. If you want, I'm sure I know Doug will be sending an email out later that we'll be able to include those two links in there for you to have a look. But it is it is the vast majority. We've registered hundreds and hundreds of trusts. I think only three that we were sent didn't need to be registered. There was some slight confusion in the industry that absolute trust or bear trust didn't need to be registered. Now, as you can see, here's an excerpt from the trust registration service manual. That, that isn't really the case. There's no specific exclusion for registration for bear trusts. Where we believe this stemmed from is the bottom line here. The bear trusts are not required to register for taxable purposes. So in the old regime, the taxable regime, Bear Trust did have an exemption, but this isn't about the taxable regime. This is about the anti-money laundering regime. And as a result, that exemption has disappeared. Now, fines and changes. Well, there have been different fines proposed uh, over the last two, two and a bit years. Um, but currently there are no fines proposed. Now. <coughs> I've got we've got our own views of why this why this might be and i'm just going to be very blunt and honest the hmrc are are very overwhelmed and very busy with this with this whole project and i think they understand that a lot of people might struggle if they haven't got good quality help from planners like integrity or or firms that can do it to get registered for the first of september so what we think is going to happen and this is based on the fact that the fines have left the website is that on the 1st September or date around then they will say um, you've now got a slightly longer date to get them registered and fines will kick in then almost like a, a little bit of a backstop who knows what it'll be but they might say you've got until now it's now the 1st September you've now got until the 1st November if you don't do it by then the fines will kick in I'm going to put a warning on that there is nothing to say they won't bring those fines back. But the fines have disappeared from HMRC's website. The last fine on there was um, £100 per trustee per month late. So let's say there's three trustees and you were five months late. That's £1,500 for the trust to have to pay in fines. There were different fines before that, but it makes no sense to talk about those. Let's talk about the latest one that was on there. But as I say, those fines have now disappeared from the HMRC website. In our conversations with HMRC and a couple of the people within this side of what we're doing, it is kind of felt that HMRC have got this hard deadline of the 1st of September, but it might become a soft deadline with a hard deadline of, say, the 1st of November where the fines kick in. Whether they backdate those fines to September or that hard, that new date, we don't know. So that goes on to me to say, there's been lots of change. We have dealt with relentless change with this. Questions moving in the process. How do you do this? What trusts need to be registered? Is it 90 days? I would consider ourselves as experts and we have to go on the system every day to see if there's been an update. We don't get an update from HMRC to say we've changed this, we've moved this, we've done that. We have to go in every single day, scroll to the bottom of the page 
look, see if there's been an update. If there has been, which has been many, we click on it, see what the update is and where it relates and what it relates to. And as a fun little bullet point, after change has been yet more changed. So while this, while this page is probably giving you no information at all, what I'm trying to illustrate is that this has been the journey for us as the experts the whole way through, registering these trusts, saying what the fine's gonna be, then the fine's disappearing. Is the deadline gonna move? No one said it is, but the inference we've been given is that the fines probably won't come back on again no guarantee and there will be a there will be a backstop date this this september might be a soft deadline with the november is a hard deadline i personally wouldn't want to risk it because why would you if you can get it registered before the first september why would you risk it but that's when we think the fines will, will come back in it's been a changing landscape since since they first mentioned this in 2017 to when it got put through in March 2020 uh, to, to now, there are many changes. In fact, we went online the other day. I think the last change they made to the trust registration manual was, was April. And the last change to one of the trust registration pages was May. And we're in May now with a deadline in September. What I will say is that assumptions are dangerous. So I'm giving you my opinion on what we've seen, what we've experienced and what we've been through you will have to make your own decisions if you said to me ben what do you suggest don't don't delay it do it if you can do it get it done um that seems to me to be the most sensible option and before i come to what registration looks like i'm just going to say something that a bit of praise for hmrc that, that they have been inundated with this and, and what's been happening we've seen a little bit of is that actually when they register, when trusts get registered, some are being seen to have not pay tax. Well, a couple of the stories we've heard is actually how easy HMRC have been to work with. They're not saying, oh, you owe us 25,000 pound tax, give it us now. We've not seen that. Actually, we're hearing something quite different. HMRC are understanding that many people are either lay people or they were unsure or didn't even really, let alone being lay, but they didn't even know they had a trust that needed to be registered all pay tax. So they're trying to work with people. One of the stories we, we've been told um, was that they actually gave a, gave a, gave a family trust a four-year payment plan to pay off that tax rather than rip out 60 grand out of that trust day one and affect people's living or whatever else they might be using that money for. They actually have put a delayed payment plan on there. So from what we can tell, HMRC have been really, really flexible and really helping with this. But I will go back to that last bullet point assumptions are dangerous just because that's what we've heard has happened for some people again doesn't mean it'll happen for everyone what does the registration look like well it's very chris taranty who wants to be a millionaire it's very easy to know all the answers to all the questions questions aren't always asked in the most plain and simple english um if anything i feel they're a little bit verbose in the way they ask them uh, you can't ring anyone to get any answers. There is no, there is no trust registration helpline. You cannot ring anyone. They've taken the live chat off the website, and the email system is, I believe, it last time last time we emailed, it's fourteen day turnaround. So if you don't know the answer, if you don't know the question, you're not going to get any help from HMRC because they're inundated. You have to elect a lead trustee or nominate a lead trustee. So the example four is Doug and I, we might say Doug's the lead trustee. It's now Doug's responsibility to register that trust. Before we can register, he's got to create a unique tax reference. He's got to go into the HMRC government gateway and create, create a unique tax reference for that trust. And if you've got one, more than one trust, you've got to do it for every trust. Sixty pages is the fewest we've seen on an application. Ninety-eight is the most. So if you know all the answers, you know how to create the unique tax reference. You've got all the details you need to create that: NI numbers, addresses, dates of birth. You've then got a sixty to ninety-eight page application. What creates sixty to ninety-eight? Overseas trustee will increase pages. Property in part of the trust will create extra pages. Business, charity. There are other things. 
that will create extra pages to make it get to that. But 60 is the fewest, 98 is the most. And you've got to be aware that there, there could be some tax needing to be paid and you are now on the radar. Trusts, I will, <laughs> some of will in trust company. I'll go to my grave. Trusts are without doubt one of the best financial planning vehicles in the world. Estate planning is trust, trusts, and more trusts. They're so clever. They work in so many brilliant ways. There's so much flexibility, so much ability to retain ownership. My little, my little girl's called Annabelle. I want to make sure that Annabelle dies. Everything I leave is protected so she can't lose it in a divorce to some horrible person that tries to take it. How can I do that? A trust. If I leave it in a will, she can take it. Trusts are always going to be the answer. And I feel I have to defend the trust there because it feels like holding something in a trust has created this problem. Well, that's it's not the trust's fault. It's this government overreach, in my opinion, that's causing this problem. We've, we've had trust since the time of the Crusades. It's, it's not a new thing. And now we've got all this extra work that's come in part of it. Trusts are usually the answer. Sadly, because of this, there is some extra work that needs to be done around it. I can come on to our solution now, though, but I feel maybe before I come to our solution, it's probably better to answer some of those questions. It feels a bit disjointed to go into our solution, then, then come back. What do you think? Yeah, sure. We can ju jump right into uh, the, the questions. That's no problem. But and, and also, as you say, if anyone's got one, please put it in the please put it in the box at the bottom, and then we can um, we can ask answer any live questions coming in. Yes, absolutely. Well, th thank you so far. It seems rather complex and uh, and a moving target. If HMRC are uh, changing the legislation daily, uh, uh, well, monthly, as you say. Um, we've had a few questions. It's, it, it's not so much the legislation, it's more about how you fill things out, where things move to, who can do what. But I, I kind of feel sorry for them because they've had this forced on them. This was passed down as part of the Anson Mullingdon Directive and someone on high has gone, who's going to sort this? HMRC, you do it. Oh, and by the way, at the same time, they're trying to sort IR35. So I, I do feel sorry for them. They've got an awful lot on and, and it... it yeah things are moving which isn't great for us and your clients but i do feel a bit i do feel a bit for hmrc because i don't think they wanted this task <laughs> yes it sounds like they haven't totally got a clear uh, approach to, to how they're resolving this but uh, are slowly getting there month by month as you say um okay well we've had a few questions come in so um let's just uh, jump into them um so well i think you've answered answered this already to the best of your ability what are the deadlines for for registering a trust let's get rid of assumptions first of september brilliant and 90 days if, it, if it's a brand new trust yeah that's why i'm more comfortable saying i think it probably is the first september it's no longer in the trust registration manual the 90 days appears on two parts of their website or one part and not on the other two i doesn't really matter the point being it was on all three parts it's now only on one or two and it's not in the manual so i think what they've had to say is well we can't because the delays were there they couldn't really force that 90 days again why wait if you can do it just get on with it yeah but yeah i, I feel they're all going to be on the first of september especially since they moved the fine i think they kind of understood they couldn't do that yeah um, so what information is, is required by the, the trust registration service? It's a very difficult question to answer because... Without going through all, all 60 yeah, pages, please. They're, they're going to want to know the names, dates of birth, addresses, and all the identifying information you'd expect with any money laundering, anti-money laundering process. Um, or if you know money laundering, what would you need for that? No. Um, any process like that, they're going to need that for all the beneficiaries, all the trustees to have that recorded in one place. Okay. They're then going to ask questions about the trust, about the assets within the trust. For example, we had one yesterday, we had one yesterday which is a Canada Life bond, very old school bond. Everyone who's been in the industry for since Noah had a dog, we had a, we had a, a trust that the Canada Life bond did an old AXA distribution bond. All they wanted to know was what, what was in it. Well, that was really simple. There was no property. There was no business assets. There was no business benefiting from it. There was no um, overseas trustees. It was just what's the product? 
who are the people, what's in the bond, what's in the, what's in the trust. It was a bond, very easy, 60 pages. But if they ask what's in it, and there's happens to be the property, or it did have a property, or it retains income from property, you've got another 15 pages coming. Wow, so even if it, it historically held, held a property, you, you'd still need to put details of that in? Depends on how it was disposed of, X, Y, and Z, yeah. Potentially no, but possibly yeah. Wow. Um, and who is responsible for registering the trust? So I guess that would be the, the, the lead trustee, me. Well, no, no. Example. It's all trustees. All trustees it falls on. And then they choose between them and nominate what we've seen it's never no one's been nominated it's been the, it's been the last person to say no but yeah it's all trustees responsible hence that that last fine which was there which was it's a hundred pound per trustee per month late because everyone's got an equitable stake in getting that registered and what they're saying is that the trustees should nominate they say lead trustee but that's a made-up phrase it doesn't exist but what they mean is a nominated trustee to be the person to lead that process because quite rightly, HMRC don't want Doris sending in some dates of birth, Barry sending in some, and, and Rob sending in something else. They want to do a one point of contact. It, you can imagine it's hard enough dealing with one, let alone three different logins and three different people. Um, and what happens after you've registered the trust? Um, it's been, it sounds a bit sales pitchy, but it's nothing much happens. They just send you a registration form saying it's been registered, here's your account number. What we do, we sent an email out to the to the trustee saying it's now been registered. Here is the, here is a copy of it. Here is a copy of the trust document. Here's a copy of your registration number. And then we send a like four or five lines on different responsibilities of the trustee and when it might be needed. We also then send out an email after eleven months saying, "Have there been any changes?" Because obviously there's the annual registration of new information needed. So we actually send an email out to prompt the client to say, has there anything been done? Because the last thing any of your clients or any client, doesn't matter it's yours or anyone's, wants is to be fined whatever that number might be because they just forgot that Doris had been retired as a trustee and replaced by Betty. Mm. So we send that out after 11 months as part of our process. There's no charge for that. We just send it out to say, is there any need to report anything new? And if there is, then obviously we can deal with that for them. But if you just get the HMRC version, you just get a copy of the trust reg and you just get a copy of the, of the, of the number relating to it. And um, what happens if you miss, miss the deadline? Well, it's a very big question because no one really knows. But HMRC have got the ability to look at with banking and with all the open source stuff that's out there, where who the trust trust bank account names held in, they can speak to the life companies to say, give us a list of all your trust investments. There's so many things that can be done. What that's going to look like, nobody can tell you, yeah. because we can't get a straight answer. But there will be a fine. They've made it really, really clear. Again, assumptions are dangerous. I don't think there'll be a fine for missing September. I'll stake my, I'll stake, I'll stake this new bottle I've got. This I've got a new, new bottle for my for my golf bag. I'll stake this new golf bottle that there will definitely be fines, and they will find some way of tracking it back, and they will work out. I guess they're going to go right. New date is let's say, let's say they let's say they send it all the way to the first of March, twenty twenty three. And if you haven't done it by then, they'll have worked out a way between then to have a register of who's not done it. And they'll backdate the fine to September. That's what I see probably happening. Yeah. And for clients and advisors, I'm not on Team HMRC, although I have got some sympathy for them, that say this has come out of nowhere. I know integrity happened because you guys have been all over it. Look, you're holding a webinar to help your clients. You're sending out letters to help them understand what the situation is. But there are lots of advisors out there saying, oh, this can't believe we've got to do this. Well, we, we found out about it over two years ago. Like, we, we knew there was going to be a deadline. We're lucky it's moved twice. It's not moving a third time. That first September is not moving. It might become a soft deadline, but we just got to get on with it. We don't want to have to do it. There's loads of stuff we don't want to have to do. I think you're right. It's better and more prudent just to uh, get registered as, as soon as possible and, and put mm. it to bed. Um, is there any way of registering a trust offline as well as online? No, 
we've never seen anything at all on that, and we've been asked a couple of times. Um, it's not, it, it, as you saw what, from the, from what I read out, what I showed on the presentation, is their new online registration. I know that's not ideal for people who have not got maybe the technical capabilities, but that's where using professional service like ours or maybe going to their own accountant to do it could could be of benefit. Because that person can do it for them. Yeah, absolutely. And and does this uh, affect life policies held in trust? Not if they haven't paid out. Because they're not what you call a life trust with money in it. They've got a note. They got it's a promise, isn't it? It's a promise to pay that trust. A life life insurance was a promise to pay that trust. Yeah. Two hundred grand if your partner dies or whatever it might be. Once there's money in that trust, then it becomes part of the scheme. They do have two years grace by which to, to register it. I don't, they're not saying, Doug, you're dead today and I'm your husband. I've got, I've got to register it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They give me two days from the date that money went in. But yeah, it, it does. Well, as soon as a life policy has got a payment into it, it does need to be registered. Interesting. Um, and how do I know if I have, to have a trust to register? Again, with the presentation will come out. We, which we will send out later, which with, with, those, with those two links on. Mm. I think it's safe to assume that most trusts do need to be registered, the vast, vast majority. But there's a few things you can do. Look, Integrity's clients are very, very lucky. You guys doing a full product sweep of all the providers, I believe that's what we, we were all spoken about. And you're going to let your clients know if you look after any trust that they need to register. But anyone watching this, it's very simple. Ask yourself this question. Have you, are you a settler of a trust? Because it's not just going to be stuff that Integrity looks after. It could be stuff that you've done independently. Are you a settler of a trust? Have you, have you given two lots of 50 grand to your grandkids or your kids and put it in a trust? They need to be registered. Even if they're not with Integrity, they have to be registered. Uh, are you the trustee for your deceased brother's family trust? Even if it's just a bank account, it needs to be registered. These are the questions to ask yourself. Are you the beneficiary? Have you deceit? I'll tell a funny story. A lady, a lady didn't know she had a trust. She told her IFA she was receiving £2,000 a month from her mum and dad. When she swapped IFAs because her IFA retired, the new IFA came along and said, this is a bit weird. She's getting £2,000 a month from her mum and dad. Hmm. And she said, well, she said, they said, why? She said, well, because the lady's 78. <laughs> How, a mum and dad in there, 90s or hundreds giving is still giving her money turned out her parents had died 20 years previously they put money in a trust fund for her in a bank account and she'd been taking two grand a month and she she just viewed it as mum and dad's money yeah. never thought about it being a trust so didn't ever register it didn't even know she had one she, was she took two thousand pound a month for 20 odd years wow so are you in receipt of any funds mm -hmm. could you be the beneficiary of a trust did, na did Nanny leave you and your sister 200 grand that's in a pot somewhere? If it is, it's likely to be a trust. It needs to be registered. And the best thing they can do, it sounds like I'm selling you guys here, but I'm not. Just ask integrity. Ask your dog or whoever your person is, does this, does this sound like it needs to be registered? Well, I think I'll, I'll echo those words to, to all our clients. If you've got any questions, any queries regarding the trust registration service, what you need to do, what falls into the, this new legislation, speak to your financial advisor at Integrity 365. Speak to me. We'll speak, speak to, to Ben or you can speak to Ben directly and we can help you through, through this journey and to make sure you're in the best position possible and make sure all those, those boxes are ticked. So finally, our last question, Ben, do I have to register the trust myself or can a representative do this for me? This is a question I wrote, so I could set talk about me some more. Yeah. I, 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 I did move it to the bottom because I thought it would nicely lead, lead into your next slide. <coughs> Look, you can register it yourself. Oh, I must have moved my automatic lights to come back on. Um, you can register it yourself. Not a problem at all. Problem is, we're finding so many people just can't do it because they don't know the questions, they don't know how to create a UTR code, or they don't want to bother with it. So, yeah, you can you can appoint an agent or representative to do it for you. 
so that leads beautifully to who we are. So the company being, <coughs> excuse me, the company being True Reg, which is our retrospective registration offer by Inherit. We're an agent. So we've got the ability to go and create that UTR code. We do the whole process. We create the UTR code for you. And let me show you. So what we'd expect to do, and I'm going to pick on Doug. you see the screen, Doug? I would expect Doug to come on board. We would not expect you guys to do this. 99% of the time, the IFA is doing this. So Doug will come on to here. He'll click Get Started. That's how you can check an update, a, a, a current one. He'll register a new application for you. He'll enter the name of the trust, be the Dave Smith. Dave Smith Trust. We must have a copy of the trust uploaded. We will not speak to a client or do anything until we have. So upload a copy of the trust. It allows us to understand most of the answers to most of the questions HMRC have got. Doug will put his name here. Doug there. Let's just put a fake phone number in. Doug will say, I'm professional advisor to the trust. And then he chooses who's going to be the first point of contact. Either contact Doug directly or contact the lead trustee. It's normally the lead trustee. Who's going to pay for it? And then the lead trustee name might be Dave Smith again. Dave. <coughs> Fake number. Click OK. Click, click the two boxes and click Submit. And by doing that, that comes to us. And we are now going to start that registration process. We will look at the trust. We will probably be able to. We've done this so many times. We know the website inside and out. We'll be able to ascertain nearly all the information we need to start that process. We will call the client, we'll have a 15 minute call with them to help them understand what we're going to do, how much it's going to cost, and what the next stages are. The cost um, is always included VAT. Um, it's around 300 to 350 quid, depending on if you've got an overseas trustee or a charity, but it's by and large like 95 percent have been 300 to 315 pounds including vat so when i say 300 to 350 it really is 300 most of the time and we will register that trust we'll get that done for you but before we start it we have that call with you to let you understand what's going to happen any information we need we'll start the registration process once you say please proceed and then we'll send you a copy of the copy of the trust registration completed for you to give the once over and confirm it's all correct we can post that to you if you're not an online person. You don't have to do anything online with us. We can do it all offline for you. We can post that to you, speak to you on the phone and work through it. Once you confirm that you're happy with it, we will then press go. It'll take as long as it takes HMRC. And we will then send you either via email or via printout all the completed documentation so you've got it. As easy as that. It really is, yeah. We just... When you, do, when, you do, when you do something 150 times a week, it becomes <laughs> It's always easy when you know what you're doing. Yeah, it is. Um, okay, well, uh, that's bringing us to uh, the, the end of the, the, the session. Ben, is there, is there anything more that, that you wanted to add? Any more snippets of, of knowledge you would like to, to gift upon us? No, um, as I will say to everyone, just don't put things off, get it done now. I, I talk about wills and trusts and LPAs all the time, be it a trust registration or your will or, or lasting power of attorney. If you haven't got it done, unless you know when you're going to die, have that conversation now. Um, and the same with trust registration. That first September deadline, they might say on the 2nd September, that's it, all the fines are in, and you're like, oh, God, I'm now going to get a fine as well. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it off, I'd just get on with it. Yeah, so I, th I think with the, uh, the moving goalposts, as you say, it's better to, to act sooner rather than later. Exactly the same as wills and powers of attorney. You want everything in place as soon as possible rather than regressing later. Thank you very much. Thank you okay, for having ben. me. Well, uh, yes, you know, thank you very much for, for your time this evening. Thank you for, for everyone that's attended. Hopefully you found that very, very helpful. As I say, please feel free to uh, approach myself or your Integrity 365 advisor. Ask us as many questions as you like. That's exactly what we're here for. 
we're here to help. And um, if you need Ben's and Kin Herrett's de details and their assistance, we'll of course pass that on to you. Likewise, if you want to, to watch this back, as I say, it is being recorded. So you can go back if you, you're a real sucker for punishment and watch it again. Um, but other than that, thank you all for attending and good night.